Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. Today I'm photographing waterfalls and I'm gonna offer you 10 tips of how to photograph waterfalls in a better way or in a more creative and controlled way. My name is Soma, photo Tom here on YouTube and I'm a full-time landscape and travel photographer. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more similar videos. On my website, I have a new service and that is one on one on Skype. And with this service, I want to talk personally to uh, one of you or some of you, if you're interested in this kind of service. Now, what is this all about? It's about me offering you portfolio critique, further tips, um, just you asking me questions or me sharing my screen to show you how I edit your photos or maybe my photos to see the editing process. So if you're interested in, in this service, in the description of this video there's a link, you go there, you check all the details. Now let's get back to the topic from this video and that is to offer you 10 tips on how to take better photos of waterfalls. Tip number one, when you take a long exposure, which is the most common way to photograph a waterfall, make sure that the white foam that is produced by the water doesn't get overexposed. This is the most common mistake I see. And when this happens, uh, you lose all the details. Now make sure also when you expose it, that you conserve some of the details. You may have the foam not overexposed, but you don't have any details at all in the short drops of water. So be very careful with this when you're doing a long exposure on the waterfall. Tip number two, small waterfalls like that one over there are shot better when you're using a wide angle lens, 17 millimeter in this case, and you are staying as low as possible. This creates a much more bigger uh, waterfall because the 17 millimeter will really emphasize and really increase the, the perspective and will give you at least the, the, the idea or the suggestion that that waterfall is much bigger than it really is in reality. Another way to photograph the waterfall is to kind of freeze the in-between motion of the water. It kind of makes um, a sense of the moving water, so you have a blurry movement of the water. And when you do this, when you want to do this, you have to increase the ISO. Now, another tip for this small tip is to use a longer focal length, to have the waterfall closer, shot, uh, shot in uh, a tighter frame. And the reason for that is for you to actually see the flow of the water. And that's why for this shot, I'm gonna use my 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Tip number four is connected to tip number three. Avoid freezing the motion of the water. And the reason for that is because when you just freeze the motion and you don't have any sense of, of motion, it looks strange because water is meant to flow, at least in a waterfall. And when you see this, your brain tells you that it's something, something's off, something doesn't look right. Tip number five, having a telephoto lens like this, at least 70 to 200 millimeters with you, makes things a lot interesting because you can shoot up close-ups and details. And sometimes you're, you're tired of photographing the same old waterfall in the same way because you go back and, and back to the same locations maybe. So, or you want something different, you photograph it wide and now you want some intimate shot. For that, you need a telephoto lens. Sometimes, and that is usually when there is no snow, the contrast between the dark rock and the white foam of the water is so big that sometimes it's worth converting the image to black and white. It will look a lot more spectacular and the water will simply pop more than uh, if you would let that photo to be in color. 
many situations when you photograph waterfalls you kind of get lost in in the beauty of silky water if you want so tip number seven is to pay close attention to composition so let me show you what i would like to do for this shot is to have this rock over here as the foreground element and then i have this uh piece of ice and then i have the waterfall and the camera will be somewhere around here don't overlook having a powerful foreground element and then uh, a leading line maybe that goes to the waterfall composition is still king no matter the subject no matter how you capture the subject in what light in what conditions no matter the technique uh, you need a geometrical composition that will sustain your waterfall tip number eight a circular polarizer is an absolute must if you want to take the reflections off from the water now also a circle polarizer can be enough to get that silky effect that milky effect of the water tip number nine if you're not satisfied with how silky smooth or milky look the water gets only with your circle polarizer you can always use an ND filter of 10 stops first you do an exposure without the ND filter and you see the exposure settings and you're satisfied with those exposure settings and then you can use an app uh, and you can extrapolate and find out the new exposure for the 10 stop ND filter you will go to bulb mode and you will do an incredible smooth image that in, in some occasions may look a lot better or a lot more interesting but there are occasions when that is purely not necessary tip number 10 when it's warm enough outside have some rubber boots with you going inside the water it's the best place to take photos it's gonna look completely different from whatever the other photographers are doing from the shore now this it's not possible in these conditions it's winter it's minus 10 degrees out here right now so it's not feasible but when it's warm rubber boots are an absolute must these were the 10 tips i had for you to photograph waterfalls and if you have anything to add or questions just use the comment section below it's steamy <laughs> from the cold and thanks for watching don't forget about my new service one on one on skype the details are on the link in the description of this video uh, thanks for being a subscriber thanks for watching again and bye bye